Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. How's it going everyone? Connor here with the Diamond and at long last, the day is finally here. As of yesterday, MLB The Show is now officially available for both Xbox and PlayStation players for the first time ever. And if you've watched either of our MLB The Show videos that we posted on this channel, which I highly recommend you check out if you haven't done so already, you would know that MLB The Show's move to Xbox is not only a huge win for Xbox baseball fans, but also a huge growth opportunity, not just for San Diego Studios, but for MLB in general. So naturally, this game comes with it a ton of expectations riding on its shoulders. And the question that everybody wants to know is whether or not this game is able to meet those expectations and live up to that hype. So today, that's what we're going to be talking about. To do so, I'm going to be discussing and rating a bunch of different aspects of the game, namely content, gameplay, presentation, features, and overall experience. But before we get into all of that, I want to first give you some caveats. First and foremost, this review is based on my first impressions of the game based on the first week of early access and the first couple of days of actual release. So take it with a grain of salt because a lot might change within the next few months. Secondly, I'm going to be focusing this review mostly on Diamond Dynasty and Road to the Show. Mostly because those are the two modes that got the most changes this year, but also because I really haven't gotten a chance to play a lot of franchise mode this year. If that's the mode you're most interested in, I'm going to link to some videos down below that focus mainly on franchise mode, and I highly recommend you check those out after you finish watching this video. But for now, let's get into it. First and foremost, let's actually talk about the content of the game itself. But to do that, we have to start by acknowledging just how far MLB The Show has come in recent years. MLB The Show 2018 was arguably the most hated game in the entire discography, and it's really easy to see why. The gameplay was terrible, the content was lacking, the grind was pretty much impossible for anyone who didn't play 20 hours a day, and the collectibles were pretty much a blatant cash grab that really didn't give the player any benefit whatsoever. So naturally, a lot of people were worried about the future of the franchise. But unlike a lot of AAA game studios like EA Sports, SDS really made it a point to listen to what their fans wanted and trying to improve the game. And as a result, over the next couple of years in MLB 19 and MLB 20, they really did a lot to revamp the franchise by adding in a ton of new and interesting game modes and content drops. Things like inning programs, moments, showdown, and tops now integration. Things that gave the player a ton to do and a ton of reasons to keep coming back to the game while keeping the grind at a reasonable level, as well as taking out a lot of the things that were blatant cash grabs in the game and making it as easy as possible for Diamond Dynasty players to get good cards and make good teams within the game without spending any money whatsoever. And as a result, they were in a really good place heading into MLB 20. And once MLB 21 was announced officially for Xbox earlier this year, I think a lot of people tampered their expectations for this game. After all, it's the first game on next gen and the first game on Xbox, so a lot of people figured that the devs would focus on just those two features and mainly try to make little improvements from MLB 20. However, as more news kept getting released, it became more and more clear that SDS was really trying to shoot for the moon here, and for what it's worth, I think they succeeded. If there's three things that fans have been clamoring for the most in recent years, it's Stadium Creator, Xbox Integration, and being able to use Road to the Show players in Diamond Dynasty. And this year, not only did we get Xbox Integration, but we got all three of those things, which of course is a massive step forward for this franchise. And so far, I think they all have brought something to the table that I think is going to be really, really cool as we go further and further along this year. 
So far, it seems that in this release, the developers have brought back a lot of the things that worked in 19 and 20, made them even better for 21, and then added on top of them even more new ways to explore the game and make it your own. So all in all, I see this as an absolute win, both for the players and for San Diego Studios. If they keep killing it with the content like they did in MLB 19 and MLB 20, I feel like MLB 21 is going to be very, very, very special this year. Overall, I'm going to give them a 9.5 out of 10 for content so far. Now, the content of the game has been pretty good for the last couple of years now, but let's be honest here, the content really means nothing if it's married with trash gameplay. So with that being said, how has the actual gameplay been this year? Well, in my opinion, I would say it's been pretty good. One of the biggest differences between this year's release and previous releases is that this year's game came out about a month later than normal, which makes sense. After all, the development team was basically building this game from their homes the entire time due to the pandemic, and of course, they were adding a ton into the game that they had never put in before, so having that extra time is warranted. And frankly, I think it did wonders for day one gameplay. The show franchise has been no stranger to day one glitches and bugs over the years, and the best example of this was probably last year, where there were major, major game breaking glitches on both hitting and fielding that plagued players for months after the launch of the game. But here, there seems to be no sign of those kinds of bugs, at least not yet. In the games that I've played so far at least, I've seen some typical minor bugs, but overall gameplay has been pretty smooth for me, even online. And I'm probably most impressed with how created stadiums have been integrated almost without a hitch, or at least none that I've seen so far. Especially given how much of an undertaking that was for the development team, I see that as an absolute W for them. But with that being said, if there is one drawback to the gameplay right now, it has definitely been the stress on the servers, which is to be expected. After all, they're basically doubling the player base of the game all at once. And while they've been trying to prepare for this moment for years, there's nothing that can fully prepare you for flipping those servers on for the first time and seeing what happens. So. Obviously, the first week of the game, we've been seeing a lot of slow servers, a lot of crashes, and a lot of lag here and there when it comes to the actual online aspect of the game, which again is to be expected and I hope they can get that figured out as the year progresses, but right now it's a real hindrance to those that are either trying to get into the game for the first time or those who are veterans who are just trying to get some games in and get their Diamond Dynasty team built up just to get started. But with that being said, I think this is going to be a temporary issue. As SDS gets more of a feel for what their active player base is going to be over the years and they adjust their servers accordingly, I think we're going to see a lot fewer crashes and a lot less lag in the online parts of the game. So overall, I think it's not much to be worried about, but it does put a drag on things so far. So in terms of gameplay, I have to give them a 7.5 out of 10. Now, if there's one thing that's been definitely lacking in this year's game, it has been the presentation. And that really starts with the menus and with the commentary. First and foremost, the new menu system is unnecessarily complicated and really confusing for both new players to the game and for veterans like myself who are just trying to get to the menus in order to try and figure out where everything is this year. I understand that the developers were looking for something different, you know, a different look, different feel from the last couple of years to try and differentiate this year's game, but in my opinion, it doesn't really work. I spent most of the, my first two days with the game trying to figure out where everything was and trying to navigate through the menus, which I don't think is a good sign for the design of really anything, so for that, I do have to dock them a little bit. And it only hurts that they have the same exact commentary that they've had for pretty much the last 5-6 years now. I mean, you would expect with a game that's been overhauled this much from one year to the next that we'd see at least a noticeable difference in the commentary, but 
No, we get the same announcers, the same dialogue, and it's just as awkward, corny, recycled, and bland as ever. And most of the time, it doesn't even match what's actually happening on the field or the situation you're facing. Now, I like Matt Vaskersian, and to a lesser extent, I like the other two guys in the booth as well, but in terms of comparing it to a game like 2K and their commentary system, MLB The Show just really doesn't hold a candle, and frankly, I had to turn off the commentary on day two because it was just getting that annoying and repetitive for me, so frankly, I, I have to dock them for that as well, but to be honest, that's not as big of a deal. You can just put on some music and play the game if you want. It really doesn't make that much of a difference. But with that being said, there are some things that are a little bit better about the presentation this year. The one thing that comes to mind for me is the addition of the Road to the Show podcast inside of Road to the Show this year. I think it adds a pretty decent amount of realism to your Road to the Show experience this year, and it also gives you a much more fleshed out storyline than we've seen in recent years since they've moved to the Road to the Show model. So. I would see that as a pretty decent improvement, but overall, I don't think it's enough to counteract the terrible menu system and the terrible commentary once again. So overall, I think I'd give the presentation about a 5 out of 10 this year. Now that we've got a lot of the general commentary out of the way, I want to do a bit of a dive into some of the big things that were added into the game this year, namely pinpoint pitching, ball player, and create a stadium. Now, last year, MLB The Show introduced the perfect, perfect hitting dynamic, which, in my opinion, made things so much more satisfying at the plate. There was nothing that felt better last year than getting a perfect, perfect fly ball and feeling the vibration in your controller as you absolutely launch one 450 feet into the second deck in left field. And now, we're going to get that exact same feeling, but this time on the pitcher's mound using pinpoint pitching. Now, I'm not gonna lie, there is a bit of a learning curve here. I used to use pure analog pitching, and I'll admit, I was completely lost the first couple of times I tried to use pinpoint pitching. But after a couple of days, you start to get the hang of it. And once you start to get the hang of it, you really start to see the benefit that this brings to the table. Now that you have the ability to have a perfect, perfect pitch, you're able to basically put the ball wherever you want to, given that you have the stick skills to make it happen, which in my opinion is a huge advantage in a game where offense has really been key, especially online. Hopefully the addition of pinpoint pitching is going to make things a lot more competitive online and make things a lot less of a home run derby as they have been in recent years. Now, in terms of ball player, the new integrated mode between Road to the Show and Diamond Dynasty, I think it's a good idea. I think they've done it well, and frankly, I think it's about time that they did it. Like I mentioned previously, I've really liked the Road to the Show podcast. I think it's added a good bit of realism considering that these are real MLB analysts and former players that are talking about your ball player as he develops. So I think that's a really cool thing that's been brought up. I like the archetype system, I like the perks, I like how you're able to develop your players so far. However, one thing that I don't necessarily like is that if you are playing as a two-way player, you have to constantly switch your equipped archetype before you go into a game, and if you forget, well, it's going to be a bad time for you. But overall, I think the integration has been fairly decent. And I really, really enjoy the fact that you're able to actually be a two-way player for the first time ever in the game. So overall, I'm really excited to see how this develops and how this created player can actually be integrated into my Diamond Dynasty team over time. Not sure if I'm actually going to use him on my team yet, but we'll see. But now we have to talk about the big thing in this year's game, the thing that everybody has been clamoring for ever since MVP Baseball 2005, and that is the Stadium Creator. And frankly, after seeing the Stadium Creator and what they've actually built, it makes so much more sense now why SDS spent so much time before they made this live. Frankly, 
This is way more than even I was expecting. The amount of creativity and things you can do in the stadium creator is absolutely mind boggling. I mean, the first time I opened it up, I legitimately spent about six hours in there creating my first stadium because there's just so much to do and you have so much control over your stadium and what it looks like. And frankly, it blew, it blew my mind. I mean, I, I had very high expectations for this, but I think they even exceeded them, if I'm being completely honest. I can see myself sitting in there and creating stadiums for hours upon hours upon hours on end because it is just that good of a mode. Like the pinpoint pitching, there is a bit of a learning curve and frankly I think the camera system is a little bit annoying in there, but overall I think with a bit of polish over time, this stadium creator is going to be one of the single best things about the show franchise and as this franchise goes forward, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more stuff that you can do with the stadium creator and I can't wait to see it. Now I will say there are some things that I wish you could add to your stadium. For example, I wish there was a way to customize your infield a little bit more. For example, if you wanted to do a grass infield or add a path to the plate. Additionally, it would be nice to have some signage or the ability to have a scoreboard of some sort on the outfield wall to give a little bit of added realism to the ballpark. But overall, I am very, very happy with how they've done it, and frankly, I'm just excited to use it more and more as we head later into this year. I couldn't be happier with the created stadium. As far as the new features into the game are concerned, I gotta give them a 9 out of 10 on it. So now, with all of that being said, let's put this all together and talk about the total experience of MLB The Show 21. Frankly, I have to say that this game not only met, but at times exceeded my expectations thus far, for multiple reasons. There were a ton of things that I did not expect them to add into this game that not only did they add them to the game, but they absolutely knocked them out of the park. Pun intended. Things like Stadium Creator certainly, but also things like Ball Player, and not only the amazing content they already have in the game, but the content they also have inevitably planned for later on in the game's life cycle. And sure, there are some drawbacks here and there, things like the current server issues and the problems with the presentation that I mentioned earlier, but overall, given all of the amazing things that they've added into this year's version of the game, those minor inconveniences are more than made up for. Frankly, I am really excited to see what this game becomes as it moves further in its cycle, and more importantly, I'm really excited to see what this game does not only for the MLB The Show community, but for the baseball community as well. This game is going to be giving a lot of people a reason to get back into baseball for the first time in, in some cases months, in some cases years. And if we can get at least a few of those people back into the fold as baseball fans through this game, I consider that to be a huge success. And frankly, if this game continues to be as good as it is right now and gets even better over time, I think this game has the potential to do more for growing the game than Rob Manfred has really ever done as commissioner. And I fully 100% mean that. Overall, I have to give this game a first impression score of 9 out of 10. And if you haven't done so already, I highly recommend you go pick up or download a copy. Right now, it is for free on Xbox Game Pass, so if you have that available to you, I highly recommend you give that a download. I have a feeling you're not going to regret it. But now, as always, I'd like to hear from you. Have you played MLB The Show 21 yet? If so, what did you think about it? And if not, what are you looking forward to most when you get your hands on the game? Let me know in the comment section down below. But for right now, that's going to do it for this edition of the Baseball Vlog. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon down below. It really helps us grow. Additionally, if you want to check out more of our content, you can see more using the link right next to me. Or if you just want some more baseball videos, we've curated some of our favorites into a playlist down below. 
As always, you can find us online at readthediamond.com or on social media at The Diamond US on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you once again for watching, and we'll see you next time.